Hello guys, and welcome to Stormilla Gaming Rant, basically. Okay, so there is this video that I watched from Dylan's Burns video, and he talks of this of the Young Turks talking about the F-16s and being basically being get sold to be sold to the Ukrainians to fight for the war. And of course, it's the dumbest takes ever. They are basically devolved into hating the military industrial complex and screw and basically no autonomy of the Ukrainians is all NATO, NATO wants the war to last forever, all that Hebrew jibber that I we've heard a thousand times times. I'm just thinking this is some of the most this is some of the most and I and I have to wonder why do people keep doing this? Why do they like I just want the two sides. Leftists or basically tankies would just basically hand wave. They basically say, "Oh, what about America to try Iraq or Castle or anywhere else, else, else stuff?" And then they say they basically ignore everything Russia has done today, and and just, or just ignore it or say that it's all propaganda. And then you have to write just saying that everything that America is doing now is bad, and they shouldn't bother doing anything with that with Europe, and Europe should. And we shouldn't care about Europe or anyone else. We have too many problems here. And it's like, what? Like, and it's two types of crazies. Let's start with the right. Right. It's like, so you guys, are you guys only doing this because you hate Biden? Like, is that it? Like, I wonder if it was Trump being the one who being the one who wants to send aid to Ukraine. Are you, would you guys complain or you would guys be quiet? I find this weird how you're acting this way to a country that wants arms. Like, they're basically, uh, both sides of this are very shallow as thinking. Like, like, the white cares about guns rights, right? And they don't want people to go into their houses to shoot them and hurt their families. Well, the Ukrainians want that. Why sh Why should we not give them what they wanted? And I'm going to explain why the, all the arguments are invalid about the whole giving money, because that's not the case what it is. But it's just kind of heartless with how they talk. And it seems like there's a, there's a slight... Slight glorification or fetishization of of the of Putin and Russia, because Russia hates the the gays at home, homo and 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 LGBT people, and that oh, it doesn't like the wokeness. That's what they're the basically are the good guys in their their, their in their very narrow sighted viewpoints, and so viewpoints, and everything America does is evil now because of the fact it's run by leftists. So we should praise everything the other side does regardless of what they actually are doing and say that it just falls in the parts of, oh, you... Okay. There was this guy I used to watch, this person I used to watch, that basically said the very same thing that Putin says, that Ukraine is not a real country, it was only made in the 90s, nobody cares about, no, they, they never have a country of their own, and because of LGBT stuff, they deserve to be destroyed, I'm like, wh why are you, like, why are you this, how can you say something that evil? Like, this whole argument of Ukraine is not a real country, like, how do you, what is a real country? Like, what is the real country in your eyes? Like, does a country need to exist for a hundred years straight to be considered one? Like, which year, which century are you talking about? Like, does it have to exist by 1700s? Then Ukraine should, it does exist because it had a Cossack state before it was taken over by the, by the Russians. Like, the Ukrainian culture was so was basically beaten up and tried and was nearly annihilated by the Soviets, Russians, Russian Empire, and so on, over and over again for our history. And then now just gave back the cultural heritage and heritage and their country that they wanted for years. But now apparently because cause stupid Putin says they don't, we just need to accept it. Then by that logic what? America doesn't exist either because 
because it came from Britain. Like, Britain could just invade America and just say, America is not a real country, it's actually Britain, but, but speaks differently. Like, that's basically what it equates to. Like, should Spain invade Mexico because, oh, they actually are, Mex are Spanish people but speak, but but with different color. Like, that doesn't make any sense. That doesn't, that can't work with sovereignty. That if, if countries go by that logic, everyone will be freeing each other and war and death and destruction. And then there are the tankies who have a fetishization of Russia, but in a communist sort of sense in their eyes, because of um, Stalin and Lenin, they basically love Russia despite even though it's not really communist, it's just authoritarian now. But because of that now they just don't like America with anything and said that anything America does is bad and bad and stuff and and of the global conflict or whatever. And it's like what? And it's like you don't both of you don't like imperialism, right? What Russia is doing is imperialism in the straightest form. America did not wait into Iraq and Afghanistan, declaring to uh, annex those two countries. It didn't go around, around ordering the massacres of whole entire villages for even offering surrender. It, like, here's the thing. The Battle of Fallujah, America's bloodiest city fighting since Ho Hawaii in Vietnam. Is it interesting that it was a Fallujah after America fought in it? Like, people could still go back to that town, and and, ho and their house would still be, in, still be there. But in places like Mariupol, Marinka, Bakhmut, there is no town. All of it has got destroyed. All of it is gone. Like, you see those thick pictures of Stalingrad. That's what the Russians do to those places. And then we have idiots like Noam Chomsky dare say that, that that Russia is more humane than America when it comes to invasions. Yes, the same Russia that is infamous for her war crimes, war crimes in almost every war is fighting because, like America, does not have the same morals in its military as America. America, the same country that would wipe out a city, city instead of act city for the sake of it, 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 have literally bombed a theater for civilians, even though they tried to show that there are civilians and no military, they still bombed it. And apparently that's what is more humane, that the America at least try to have no civilians. Because there's, there's a big difference between Russia and America when it comes to war. America doesn't go to war wanting to kill civilians. It wants to take out the enemy. Where civilians die is usually due to dumb mistakes, either by misfires, bad communication, but it's not because the American soldiers are evil and are ordered by the high-ups to be vicious as possible. Heck, even the worst war crime in America in Vietnam, the Mai Lai Massacre, that was... the the. The officers did not order them to massacre the village. They ordered them just to be to find Viet Cong. But because of circumstances by that, that unit having been brutalized by earlier fighting and anger from them, they just decided to take their anger out on those people. Very wrong, and we can all agree that it was very wrong. But, but see what happened in my lie, and Russia would do that 50 times again and again every village and there won't be a peep from the office from the officers like the fact that the off Russian officers in the in the Ukraine war literally would order artillery strikes on civilian targets to mass their retreat during the during the northern campaign like they literally would tell the soldiers to do that stuff like a Russian several Russian soldiers literally uh, were told were told that they were ordered to murder civilians and any Ukrainian prisoners. Like, the very gossip, the very video of the Ukrainian soldiers saying South Ukrainian, they mean gun down. Are we really saying that Russia has any more high ground in this war at all? And then, the whole illegal, illegal, not, what are we going to call it an accusation? They're just taking land that, they, that does not belong to them. They have done this in Crimea, and they've done it again. Yeah, 
there's a reason why there's a reason why you why you create is never gonna gonna have any peace settlements with them. They're never gonna give away that land because Russia's gonna do that again and again and again. Again. And then you hear these pundits say, Well you do no ghost street and then I but then they don't answer the one question. What who what negotiations do you think they're gonna have? Russia says they want to demilitarize Ukraine, they want Ukraine government to dissolve, they dissolve and give it the puppets, they want to take all the ground they take it and take it in this war war, three of the most unacceptable things that are basically a suicide by country. Do you really think Ukraine will ever accept that? Ukraine wants its territory back. It wants to end the Donbass conflict that Russia purposely made worse. Worse. It and honestly, it should get Crimea back. It's not Russia's. Heck, Russia's. And let's be real here. Russia keeps having these red lines that like, oh, we're gonna nuke if we do this. We're gonna nuke if we do that. No, they don't do that. They don't nuke. They don't use nukes. Let's be real here, people. Nobody's ever going to use nukes in this day and age. Am it mad? Mutually assured destruction is a thing. Putin and his, and his cronies are not that stupid. They're not Patrick level stupid that they would that they would push the red button the moment they don't get what they want. If they were if they was that type of stupid, the war would have ended by now. They have said this. Mo they are, this shows how weak the Russian Federation is. Let's ask ourselves this. Why didn't America and the Soviet Union not threaten each other or other countries with nukes during their wars? Why didn't America threaten Vien North Vietnam with nukes during the Vietnam War? Why didn't Russia threaten, threaten Afghanistan or the Talib or the, or the Mujahideen with nukes during this war? Why didn't Why didn't America threaten Cuba? Wait, no, not Cuba. Uh, but those two. Two, two, two wars. Wait, why didn't the Britain threaten the Argentina with nukes threaten what during the Falklands War? Like, why didn't 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 they not just launch nukes? Why? Because of mutual destruction. Heck, in the first and second Chechen wars, why did Russia threaten Chechnya with nukes? Because they, cause they know that that's not, that's not how wars work. Even in Korea, why didn't America just use nukes there? Did not use nukes. Because it's not right. Truman was intelligent. He knew full well if he just used nukes willy-nilly, everybody else would use nukes willy-nilly. And he seeing the, the destruction and chaos nukes could bring. He said, no, we're not going to use nukes no matter what what's happened. We're going to use our deterrent, but we're not going to use them. MacArthur did not understood that. Understood that. That's why he was asking for nukes. But the more he tried to do that, he got ousted. Because of course he was. He did not understood what nuclear destruction was. And so he was ousted from it so they don't do that. So now, so we shouldn't, so this whole Russia might nuke the world. No. Russia wants control. It doesn't want to want 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 a fallout world. World. Uh, no. What fallout would only happen when everybody feels threatened very. And even then, why then? Nothing. Russia should not be treated like the like a school ground bully that's invincible. Like it's not. They are a bully. Are we really going to award this bully that threatened his neighbors over and over again for hundreds of years, and we're just going to award his behavior? What about Pol what about Pol what about Poland? What about the Baltic states? What about Finland? You want like people always say about your Spanish. Let what what about you ask yourself this? Why did those countries so quickly went to NATO for? NATO for for NATO to apply because they know Russia. They know Russia won't stop. Even though the Soviet Union fell, they know that the Russia was the source of the Soviet Union. They were the source of their suffering. They were the source of their lack of freedoms and freedoms. Just Poland is is stronger now than it ever was under the Soviet Union. Full stop. This is the reason why Poland is so eager to help work with with the uh, with Ukraine 
because they know full well that that you create that 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 Ukraine, if they win, will be able to make sure the Russia doesn't do this again. Yet, why should um, why should NATO and the rest of the world just bow to whatever Russia says the more it tries to friend nukes like a spoiled child? Like that's not how countries work. America doesn't do this with its neighbors. America didn't. F America and NATO didn't threaten the other those countries to apply for NATO membership. There was no 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 deal. There was nothing there to suggest that there was ever a deal that NATO was not supposed to get any more countries. Those countries came to NATO fair and square, square, square. Hey, Russia, maybe if you don't want those countries to not want to go to NATO, maybe you shouldn't act like an imperialist, imperialist jerk. I mean, is that such a hard thing to do? And so, it's just, I don't... And then there are the people like <coughs> history legends that try to act on neutral but actually praise Russia for non-existent military achievements and try to act like they're stronger than stronger, and try to deny the fact that, our, that the Russian military is actually pretty pathetic, that they can't even defeat our country that's in its borders. I'm just always done with these propagandists, I'm done with these people trying to to, um, act like Russia is some sort of, so, some sort of pure saint, and we're just going to ignore everything it does. Are we really going to ignore the fact what they've done in Syria? How they made Syria how they destroyed Syrian life for what they done to Bobbin. That's not right. We're gonna ignore that they basically destroyed Chechnya and then they put out a puppet there to pe people under the bondage of Russia. That's not right. I really gonna ignore the fact of all the horrible atrocities they've done in Ukraine and avoid them for it, give them more land and give them time to start another conflict. Cause that's what it all boils down to. If you Give Russia the land, and they're just going to do this again. Because cause what these people, both left and right, want is appeasement. They don't want peace. Appeasement is basically basically having, basically having trying to ask for temporary peace, and then it starts again. Again, Russia has been mandated that it wants to bring back the Russian Empire. Putin literally says that he believed that the Soviet Union and the fall of it that was the biggest tragedy in his eyes. He basically wants Russia, he wants the Russian Empire from before World War I. That's what he wants. Once, once. It's just that it's now backfiring in his face. Face. We and also, for all those saying, oh, you US taxpayer money being wasted. No. You know what they actually are saying to Ukraine? Old weapons, old planes, old those FCTs are made in the 1970s, were, were being tested in the 1970s. They're not paying you that. They're not, and they're, and they are made from, and they're, those that are being in Europe, they can give to Ukraine. So they're not even American either. They're giving them old Abrams. They're giving them old guns. They're giving them old weapons. They're giving them all the old stuff. And then the military industrial government can reimburse the US government with new weapons. Synergy. That's all it is. Synergy. We give the Ukrainians the weapons they need. We get new weapons. And let's ask us of this. If the, if the weapons like HIMARS and Patriots are doing this much damage to the Russians and Russians, 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 and it's just a speck of the of what America has, why should we not? Like let's like we're, America is not losing anything supporting Ukraine. Nothing. Nothing. It has nothing to do with the debt. It has nothing to do with anything that happened in America. We can give them all the weapons we could give them. We just don't need to give them nukes. That's all there is. Don't give them nukes. They still want that. They don't. Look, Zelensky doesn't ask for nukes. He wants to free his country. He doesn't ask for nuclear war. So let's stop doing this. Let's stop, stop trying to do a peace with. Let's stop being a Chamberlain. Because that did not work for the world in 1939. And it's not going to work now. Because you're just asking for much worse to happen. Because if you, if you give Russia what it wants, more countries will act like Russia. China may actually invade Taiwan and not do just threats all, all the time. Iran might actually friend its neighbors way more. Or other countries may friend their neighbors way more. 
So let's not do this. Let's not do a peace with people. And uh, this is Stormy Go, sorry, don't.